What is going on everybody? My name is Jeremy and this is a brand new season of The Drill. This is episode 25 of The Drill and I can't wait to show you guys what we have in store for this season. Uh, first thing obviously is my face on screen. Very exciting. I just wanted to up the production value a little bit, get a little more in depth, a uh, little bit more pre-planned with what's going on in The Drill this season. Uh, that way it's not just kind of like a spur of the moment, what can I think of this week? It's it's a lot more planned out. I have tutorials that I'm um, going to be working on. I have tutorials that I'm referencing for some of the work. And I'd like to go a little more in depth with what kind of information I'm providing for you guys because I really do appreciate you watching and tuning in. And I've really been itching to get started on the drill again. So sit back, relax, and I hope you enjoy the new season of the drill. All right, and here we go with that good, good drill. So what I'm doing this week is I'm taking, uh, I, I took some direction from David Aryev, just, uh, who just came out with an awesome uh, tutorial for iDesign.com. Uh, that will be linked in the show notes down below. And he was, uh, what David was doing was using um, deformers on a plane to make a landscape just with cinema's uh, native noises and kind of blending those together. There's a ton of information that he went into with that. Uh, that was the little snippet I stole because what I wanted to do this week is kind of come up with some concept art, um, like a moving concept art kind of thing. I love uh, concept art stills. Um, all summer long, I've been uh, studying and reading concept art books and uh, buying more than I I probably should be and um, I, I really love the, the you know just the environment that they kind of evoke so what I wanted to do was see if I can make like a little six to seven second animated um, concept uh, um, animated concept art so uh, what I'm doing here is I'm using um, uh, like I said I'm using the direction from that tutorial to start to build out uh, the geometry for my landscape I'm using polygon.com textures I'm actually using a burnt I think it's like a burnt bark or something like that and uh, just to apply that to get this like scraggly rock kind of thing and you could tell like in the foreground here there's uh you see a lot of the um you know you lose a lot of the fidelity in that and you kind of you know kind of looks like an old like a playstation game or something like that where the textures were not that great so what i was uh, hoping to do was lean on the art style that i wanted to go with and to kind of clean that up uh kind of you know when you see a lot of concept art a lot of it is uh, you know, digital or hand painted. Uh, I'm sure a lot more of it nowadays is digitally painted. But but anyway, uh, you know, I'm hoping to, you know, in playing around in After Effects with the textures. Um, uh, I'm sorry to add texture. Um, uh, I actually create my characters in Photoshop. You'll see soon. So um, that's uh, and then with the depth of field in the camera, I was hoping to kind of battle that a little bit. You can see I kind of knock that out of uh, focus uh, in the in the, in the in the the more of the middle ground and definitely the background. Um, but I do have a, a character that's going to be standing in the foreground so I was hoping to clean that up a little bit in uh, post. So what I'm doing here is I'm just using a primitive uh, figure uh, to kind of stand in. I made him green just because I was losing him in the or her in the foreground. And then here you can see is my giant monster and basically what I'm doing for this uh, this piece is it's just like a little dude in the foreground and big giant monster in the background um, you can see I was crashing a little bit here I think um, and I don't know if that was because of the fog volume I was playing with but I was just trying to get like the balance of everything uh, correctly and for a while I was just uh, really uh, playing around with the composition of the shot um, eventually at one point I think I kind of scrap the whole um, the whole th this valley look that I was going for and try to reposition that um, but what I am doing here is I'm actually using the um, an octane scatter material to apply these awesome uh, rocks that um, uh, David mentions in his tutorial um, I'll provide that in the link below as well uh, I apologize because the the source does not come to mind right away but what they are these uh, it's uh, photo scanned rocks and there's all sorts of uh, detailed variations of them and what I'm doing is using the octane scatter material through a random um, 
effector on that to scale them and rotate them a little bit uh, in different ways. And I used a vertex map to actually paint on the different areas of my geometry where I wanted those rocks to show up. So what it was doing was just providing a little bit more of, I think, an organic look. Um, again, uh, more credit to David. He goes into this uh, information uh, really, really in depth with you know, uh, organically blending different parts of your environment so it just looks more natural. Um, I mentioned that PlayStation kind of texture and environment that I had at the beginning. I think where, by adding in these rocks, it just like adds a little bit more uh, interest. So that is what I was doing there. Now we have Superman. What I'm doing, I'm actually on a different machine for this portion. You can see uh, if you're paying attention, uh, or if you notice, sorry, um, the apple in the upper left-hand corner. I actually did this uh, at work. I work at an ad agency, so um, I'm always on the computer. And a lot of times, like I get inspired by something during the day. And I'm like, oh crap, I gotta wait until I get back home. Um, I run on PC at home, but uh, you know, I, lives are very busy and stuff like that. So I'm like, you know, I get this idea spur of the moment. I'm like, oh, I wanna tackle that at lunch, but I can't record it because um, I, you know, I'm on a different machine. And then, I don't know, it's like probably pretty obvious uh, to most of you, but I, like, it just kinda hit me. I'm like, oh, I can just, uh, you know, I just use OBS uh, for those of you who are wondering what I record screen with. I was like, oh, I'll just do that at work. Uh, so I can continue to get work done on the drill. So <laughs> anyway, so what I'm doing here is I wanted to make these characters in After Effects um, or animate them in After Effects, uh, mostly because I didn't want to go too in-depth with the character design. I knew uh, they were going to be silhouetted and the monster in particular was just this kind of like blobby, almost like an iron giant kind of guy. Um, those two circles there, I actually used uh, spheres with um, a black body emission uh, texture on those to affect the uh, environment back there and and what I was trying to do with this is figure out if I can um, make this kind of concept art kind of quickly and kind of iterate on that quickly and that was another reason why I didn't want to go too far into designing the characters or anything like that so I pulled uh, you saw it was like a, somebody's artwork of a Superman um, just uh, you know Google images of that uh, Google images of like a hero pose and then I just kind of traced over them in Photoshop just to get the forms down um, I am have been practicing my drawing and digital drawing skills so uh, but I've found that it's easy to cheat by kind of like tracing over that and, and uh, just to get those practice on those forms so uh, here what I'm doing is I'm now in After Effects I'm rigging up my characters I just have uh, pin uh, anchor point points at um, the shoulders of each character um, uh, Those are the main animators. I, I uh, Pin those shoulders uh, legs, uh, you know, I parented everything together But what I'm all I'm really doing is animating the shoulders up and down just to give them like a like a very subtle like breathing uh, What I'm doing here is bringing in all my different passes. I actually left the alpha um, Completely open on the back just to render it faster and so I was trying to recreate the like background environment. Uh, and then what I'm doing here is uh, using um, some stock video of some birds flying by. And uh, just to, to give a little more life and depth to the concept art. Um, just to kind of, so you really feel the distance and, and scale of the scene. Um, unfortunately, the way the, where the, the video crops out of the birds, um, I would like to make them a lot smaller, but they actually would just like disappear off the side. So I was going to play with masking and stuff on that, but I figured I'll just kind of tuck them into that little crevice and see where we could go from there. But I am wrapping up the lighting and just a little bit of the color grade here. I, I You can see me throwing on my uh, lens flares. And what I did right here at the last point is I, I played with some noises and I just used the noise and stretched it. Um, really really far I think like 8,000 percent vertically and then um, rotated one uh, about 45 degrees to the left and 45 degrees to the right to get this like cross hatch kind of feel and here is the final render you can see our dude in the background uh, it's a nice noisy image I was planning it to be noisy like this um, just again to kind of give it that like a little bit more textured feel like that it was like a little handmade or, or digitally painted or whatever but uh, all in all I, I'm really happy with how this came out we have our little hero, we have our giant in the background, we hopefully are evoking this like question of like, oh, what is going on, what is this world, blah, blah, blah. Um, but uh, all of this is again credited to iDesign.com and David Aryev's awesome tutorial for really sparking the idea and really letting things go from there. 
So that's all for this week's episode. Thank you so much for joining me. Uh, please do consider subscribing. We're almost at a thousand subscribers and we're going to be doing a prize giveaway once we hit a thousand. So stay tuned each week. Once we hit that mark, that's when we're going to uh, give the contest details and uh, really give back to you guys for being so awesome in providing me with subscribers and views and likes and comments and all that. We're just re really trying to get the community going and and keep it uh, moving and fluid. I know I took a break for the summer, but I'm back. Um, you can tell I am excited. I hope I'm a little shaky on the camera and I'm hoping to get better at that as well. So next week we're gonna be doing cloth simulations. Uh, I'm gonna be designing uh, the actual patterns that will go on the, the cloth and then trying to explore what we could do with cloth simulations in Cinema 4D uh, without doing it with X particles or anything like like that and seeing how far we could kind of push that and and see how how simple of a setup we could get with just the native cinema 4d so please do comment down below like share definitely subscribe ring the bell for notifications we are back in full swing this is the drill season two and we're going to be going all through the fall and winter um, and we'll see how long we actually have episodes planned out for the rest of the year so we're not taking a break anytime soon. I appreciate you guys for sticking by. I've seen the subscribers come and go this summer while we were on hiatus, but I really appreciate those of you who have stuck through. So I'm rambling. I'll let you go. Thanks so much for watching, and I can't wait to see you all next week on The Drill.